My name is Barbara Ann Lambert. My husband's Stuart and Russell, his brother, was born five years later. They had a family farm and they had the largest goat uh, operation in the Dominion of Canada. They had 100 milking goats. And the reason this is important is that the economic hub of the Paw River town site is that where they were selling the milk. And they became, in the, in, even in Depression, they became wealthy and they were paying cash for new vehicles. So the Paw River town site and the mill there, it was not just the mill site, there was, you got the econo economy of the, the wa wages, you have that people are spending their money, they're buying food, they're, and obviously they're buying milk, and so there are entrepreneurs like Tom Lambert who could take his truck into the town site and sell milk. So the, the, the economic hub of the power site went out like fingers into the community. Um, we'll skip now to the, the 1930s. Um, Tom, uh, uh, we have um, Stuart and his brother, and they were going to the high school uh, in the town site, they attended the high school there. Um, and they applied to get jobs in the mill. However, during this period of time, they were blacklisted because their father was a member of the CCF. So they were blacklisted and because of their father, not because of what they had were interested in or believed in, it's because their father was a member, a founder member of the CCF. So they were blacklisted. However, the union came in and things changed in the late 30s. So in the early 40s, at the beginning, the war started in 1939. Um, at the beginning of the war, we have many uh, young men in the town site volunteering to go to war. And there's um, a desperate shortage of men. Um, Russell and Stuart were farmers. However, they worked in the mill for the first couple of years of the war. And then at that point, um, Stuart's father died in 42 and he was delegated by, by the actual, by the government to run the farm and to, to actually um, breed pigs because the government wanted, to, uh, wanted the farmers in the country to go into pig farming because it was easier to transport the meat around the province um, from, from um, having pigs. And <clears throat> Stuart's brother um, went to war. So they were, um, but they did work in the Paro Company mill the first two years of the war. I came to um, Paw River in 1968 to teach and uh, in the 1970s I was teaching at Henderson School in the town site and my timeline of 1970 was the town site was extremely dirty, run down and it's a place that people avoided to live in. Um, the smell from the mill was atrocious and there was soot everywhere. So um, most people were actually at that point living either in, um, in Wildwood, Cranberry or Westview. Westview was expanding very rapidly. To be quite honest, nobody wanted to live in the town site in the 1970s. The houses were pretty decrepit because they'd been built, some in 1910, and here we have in 1970, you're talking about 60 years later, they were in need of repair. Most, many of the houses in the town site at that time were rented. People had bought them for a very low cost when they were sold off by the Power River Company in 1955 and they simply used it as to generate income. 
And so um, I'll end with saying that um, in 19, go back to the beginning of the story in the 1970s, I was working at Henderson School. And on a Friday night, Stuart used to pick me up. We used to go down into the town side because he had bags of money. Um, because by this time he had a chicken farm and he had bags of money. And he would uh, go into the Bank of Montreal uh, to deposit it. And I, in the 1970s, all the major banks were in the town site, the headquarters. They had branches in Westview, but all the main branches were in the town site. It was still a functional entity as a business section in the early 70s. What we did as a treat afterwards, we had our daughter Anne, and we would take, she was just little at the time, we would go down to now the Rodney Hotel because it became the Rodney Hotel, when it was sold in 1917 um, by Andrew McKinney. And the reason he sold it, because one, his wife had died, Barbara, um, and the main reason was that prohibition came into British Columbia. And he needed to pay the lease. He, would, he needed the money from the pub to pay the lease. So he decided to um, sell the lease. And by this time, it would be like 90 plus years left on the lease. And he sold it to Rod and May McIntyre. And Battleman, their son, suggested they call the hotel Rod May Hotel. So we would go down there uh, on a Friday after Stuart had been to the bank. And we'd go into the... Um, cafe there and it was still the old-fashioned cafe which we loved and we ordered milkshakes and um, Stuart would tell stories about um, the old days um, when his parents lived there and and um, and he loved to tell the story how there's a grand entrance to the hotel a grand entrance that at when he was just over a year and a half of age he fell down every single step of that run entrance. And so we could kind of smile about it. But it was the height of our town site visit was actually going to the Rodney Hotel. It was, and the milkshakes were fantastic. <laughs>